I, I think it's important uh, people have a sense of what is going on. Uh, and uh, uh, my uh, reading right now of the G20 is that uh, there are a whole lot of issues. Some are longer term structural, meaning that uh, they have been discussed before, including at earlier G20s. Some are more emergent, they, they are issues of the last year, maybe the last two, three years, uh, which have again come to head, whose, whose uh, uh, stress impact uh, on countries uh, is, is very high. So, you are going to get really a mix of issues uh, that the world is looking at. Uh, and a lot of this, uh, the burden is on the global south, uh, on developing countries. Uh, so, uh, one very important message for us is focus on the global south. But uh, there is a larger context. The context is of a very turbulent global environment. You know, the impact of the COVID, uh, impact of the Ukraine conflict, mm -hmm. uh, uh, issues like debt, which have carried on for some time. Uh, and, and by the way, in, uh, you know, climate disruptions which are today affecting the economy as well. Uh, I'll come to Global South because you spoke about that post BRICS also. Sure. Uh, I'll come on that, but uh, first I'd like to ask about whether, uh, you know, the, the fact that President Putin and President Xi are not going to be uh, present at the New Delhi meet, uh, is that, has that cast a shadow on the uh, summit? Not really. I mean, look, uh, I think uh, at different points of time in G20, you know, there have been some presidents or prime ministers who, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. have chosen not to come themselves. Uh, but, you know, that country and that country's position uh, is obviously reflected by whoever is the uh, representative uh, on, on uh, that occasion. Uh, so, you, you had, you know, some occasions where you had, uh, you know, a president or two, sometimes three, uh, who, who have not uh, uh, themselves come. But I, I do think, you know, my, my sense from talking to the ministers certainly, and I know the Sherpas are in touch with each other, they are right now uh, trying to hammer out the final uh, document. I think everybody is coming with a great deal of seriousness. I mean, they, will it have yeah. an impact on the outcome uh, of the meet? I would put it this way: that uh, the you know uh, the issues are there. Uh, these are not issues that are this morning being taken up. I mean, there's a whole gestation period of eight nine months where, at different levels, mm -hmm. ministers or officials have tried to progress an issue. So, this is like a culmination, mm -hmm. you know. These are, uh, these are really about uh, 16, 18 processes which are all coming together to be stitched up together to, to produce a summit. Uh, so, outside. Russia and China are not really miffed with India and is that the reason? No, no, no. no I, 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 don't, I don't think it has anything to do with India. I mean, I, I think whatever decision they make, I mean, they would know best but uh, uh, I, I would not at all see it the way uh, you would suggest. And it's not going to have an impact on the de the declaration itself is a is a complicated procedure to arrive at a consensus to have a declaration. So uh, are we moving towards it? Are the countries moving towards that? And well, we are negotiating right now. As as I said, the negotiation uh, is not uh, uh, the clock did not start ticking yesterday. The clock has been ticking for some time. Mm -hmm. So. Typically what happens is there's a ministerial meeting, then a ministerial meeting produces outcomes. I'll, I'll give you an example. Okay. Uh, I chaired the development minister's meeting. Okay. So when I, we did the development minister's meeting, uh, there was uh, an agreed, all 20 countries agreed that there should be an action plan to speed up the sustainable development goals achievement. Uh, the all 20 countries agreed that we should have high principles for uh, environmentally friendly lifestyle. Hmm? So now if these have been already approved, uh, either they get attached or some part of it in some summary form comes into the document. So everyone, you know, the labor, the, the education, the, fi the finance is a very, very important track. I mean, Correct. That's a very crucial track because in a way that's where the whole thing began, the G20 exercise began. So every track 
uh, feeds in outcomes. These are uh, some of them have multiple meetings like finance, some of them have a uh, single meeting. So these outcomes are melded together uh, and they produce a composite document. In addition, there are things which may be uh, discussed among the Sherpas or the leaders may also discuss some things among themselves. These meetings have been going on since the beginning of this year. Right. But uh, is there a consensus building and what will India see as, as the host, what will India see as a win-win situation? Well, I, I don't think it's just a matter of India seeing something. Uh, today, uh, the, the expectations of the world uh, are, are uh, very uh, high in terms of uh, what the G20 uh, is able to produce and produce in terms of meeting the challenges of the world. So, if you were to go to Africa, we go to Latin America, go to parts of Asia, go to the Caribbean, go to the Pacific, everybody is today saying, okay, I have a certain set of issues. You know, I have a debt problem, I have a trade problem, I have a health access problem, I have a green uh, development resourcing problem. So, what will the G20 do for me? So, the world is waiting. So, the world is waiting uh, or today I see it more uh, for India as a responsibility that we have the responsibility today in a very difficult world. You know, it is difficult in terms of the COVID impact, difficult in terms of the conflict impact, in terms of the climate impact, in terms of debt. That's one part of it. But it's also difficult politically. There is a very sharp north-south divide. There's an even sharper east-west polarization. So how do you bring people together? How do you find common ground? How do you how do you make everybody understand that we all have a bigger responsibility mm. and, and therefore please you know can we can we kind of get our act together here and and uh, do what is right by the world as a former diplomat and now as an external affairs minister i guess that's right up your alley to find common ground well uh, you know i everybody has wor worked and is working on it you know uh, there's a you know, every minister, we, we have uh, about 15 ministerial tracks. Every minister has put in the best. The Sherpa and his team have worked and are working very hard. So it's a, it's a, it's a collective Gina. effort. Sure. Right. You, you've just come back from BRICS. Yeah. You're heading uh, for the ASEAN summit, East Asia this summit. Evening. Yeah. So f that's the East Asia summit. And then is the G20. It's a, it's a packed schedule. You spoke about Global South. You spoke about the divide between the East and West, between the North and South. Uh, and trying to find common ground. Do these countries see India as a voice? You said represent the global south. Do, it, does, do these countries who are participating in these uh, fora, do they see India as a credible voice within the fora? Uh, the global south countries? The, uh, yes, uh, I mean, um, I, I would certainly hope so for this reason. Uh, there have been G20 summits before. No other G20 presidency made an effort to get together the developing countries who are not on the table and say, please come sit with us, tell us what are your concerns, and we will distill those concerns and place it before the G20. That's a very unique exercise. Nobody has done it before. Mm. So if we have taken the trouble, and we meaning here Prime Minister Modi himself, mm. you know, if 125 countries have been consulted, feel today, yes, what we told India. India has promised us that they will put that issue on the table. I think they have a lot of expectation of India. Uh, and the, as far as the rest of the G20 is concerned, they know that, look, we have always in G20, outside the G20, India has a reputation of being a very constructive player, uh, you know, someone who bridges, divides, who kind of somewhere helps to fix uh, problems. So, so the, there's, a, there's a lot of goodwill that we have. And, uh, and again, uh, I, I stress to you, I, I'm confident that every one of the G20 coming to Delhi will understand the responsibility that they bear, will understand today that the other 180 countries of the world are looking to them to set directions uh, and that they cannot afford to fail them. 
Do these countries at any point of time feel that India has shifted its position, is leaning more towards the US than it used to? I know I sound like a dinosaur, but let me hark back on the non-aligned movement uh, period when we were considered absolutely uh, you know, n not leaning. And if at all leaning, then more towards the Soviet bloc, the former Soviet bloc. Do they see us leaning more towards the US now? No, I, I hate to confirm to you that you are being old fashioned here. Mm -hmm. Uh, that it's it's really I think a very uh, anachronistic way of looking at the world today. I think a lot of countries identify with India uh, as a developing country. A lot of countries identify with India uh, as a democracy. Many mm -hmm. identify with India, saying, "Okay, you know, it's a pluralistic country. We see many uh, institutional, cultural similarities." So different people in the world identify uh, with us, but do understand this point. Uh, G20 is not the arena for power politics. You know, I, I accept, I'm very, very conscious that uh, diplomacy and international relations is a very competitive exercise. But even in diplomacy, there are occasions when you are competitive, there are occasions when you are cooperative. G20 is very much a collaborative forum. It is even countries who differ profoundly on many other issues. But their history, if you look at it, in G20 is to find something which, which uh, brings them together. So we are trying to develop an agenda mm -hmm. that if you, if you look at, you know, at uh, resources for green development, for example, if you look at uh, dealing with sustainable growth, if you're looking at plastics, if you're looking at biofuels, if you're looking at uh, educational access, at nutrition, uh, these should not be, and I don't think these are political issues. So what India's strategic calculations and adjustments may be, I think is a different subject. Hmm. But you know, uh, I've covered G20s earlier, and whenever there's a summit meeting, the presence of the American president kind of overshadows uh, the other heads of state. And uh, it can be something very small like the cavalcade going, and then everybody is made to wait for the US president to go forward. So uh, do you think that the fact that uh, President Biden is going to be here for three days in India, is that going to impact on uh, the other countries feeling that India as a host country is again paying too much attention? No, I, look, I, I, I just think you're going on a wrong track here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, you will see that uh, everybody will come in smoothly. Nobody will have to wait for anybody else. Uh, that, uh, you know, for us the G20 is a collective exercise. We will deal with it uh, in that collective. Right? It's Approach. not just the bandubas I'm talking we, about. We are, look, we are India.